bringing them in and in, into the true vine of knowledge and truth. All right. So what we're going to do uh, and when we get this up back here, y'all let me know, because I do want to look at two words in original language. And one of them is Holy Spirit and the other one is voice because we're going to deal with that. So quick as that get up, I want y'all to look at it. I'll go into that. Now, we dealt with exercise number one. We pointed out that we are what? A spirit being, have a soul, live in a body, right? And we look at each one of those parts and make up, make up man, the trichotomy of man. The spirit is born again, right? Just like God, just like Elohim. The soul is being sanctified or being saved at the rate that we go through the what? Transformation, get transformed through the renewal process. Be not conformed. Be ye transformed by the renewing of our minds, right? That we'll be able to do something. See, there's a reason why he said it like that, because that put us in the position that we'll be able to make right choices and be able to identify evil. And we're going to look at that as we go into what we're about to talk about. So we're going to get exercise number two. In the body, 1 Corinthians 9, 27, we have to put it under. We just have to control the body. Crucify uh, the emotions. Philippians talks about crucifying the passions and desires of the emotion, the, uh, the emotions, which is, uh, which will express how we feel, but we're never to be led by emotions. We're always to be led by what the spirit, Holy spirit who leads our, what born again, human spirit. Okay. So we're going to jump into exercise number two. And, uh, that is know the voice of Elohim, God, know what interferes with knowing that voice. We need to know the voice of our father okay and we also need to identify with what will interfere that's why is we got to have discernment to know what's good what's bad what's evil what's right what's wrong because there are a lot there are a lot of voices out here okay so let me uh move this up right here i got some down here too low and i need to just get it so i can see it okay all right so if y'all taking notes you can do that until we uh, uh get everything up okay all right all right, so know the voice. Now, know the necessity of following his spirit. Now, first, we're going to look at, let's go over into the scripture. I want to look at Hebrews 5 and 14. Hebrews 5 and 14, and we get our PowerPoint up. You will see that we're dealing with knowing the voice of Elohim, knowing the voice of God, and knowing the necessity of following his spirit. Now, remember I just said in Romans, uh, it said, be not conformed, but be what? Transformed. And the reason for that, so we'll be able to discern. The good, perfect, and acceptable, what? Will of the Father, right? Okay, right. Okay, so now look at Hebrews uh, 5, and you're going to see this pop up again. Uh, Hebrews chapter 5 and verse 14. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to read from the Lexham English Bible, and I'm also going to read from the Living Bible. Hebrews 5 and 14. All right. Now, the Lexham Bible says, but solid food is for the mature. This is what we're dealing with. We're dealing with what? The personal growth development, the personal growth exercises, the process. We need to understand the process, and we also need to know that if we don't do what's necessary to go through the process, we'll be stagnant and we won't grow. We won't grow. This is the reason, uh, stunted growth is the reason why some believers are not getting the benefits of the word or not taking the word and applying the word to their lives to live by and receive the benefits of it. You know, if we are still saying or asking the Lord to bless us, that, that's a baby talking. Now, we need to grow out of that, though. We got to go through some growth to get to the point to understand that he already, what? Have blessed me, right? And as I work the word, the word will do what? Work for me. And that'll take a, a lot of hoping and praying and wishing and, and washing and all that stuff. That'll be gone. Because we understand, I just need to live by the keys, the uh, concepts, the precepts, the law, the system of the kingdom. As I do that, things going to happen for me. So I don't need to be using my faith to try to get stuff. I need to use my faith to live holy and to live clean. Okay, because all the stuff has been provided. Now, he says, but solid food is for the mature who, because of practice, have trained their faculties for the distinguishing of both good and evil. Here we go right here again. A sign of maturity is the ability to do what? Distinguish from what was good and what's what else? Evil. Now look at uh, Isaiah. This just came. No, no, no. Let me get the new trans, uh, new living. Then we're going to look at Isaiah 5 and 20, I believe. 
And let me look at, uh, get this other translation that said I would read from. The uh, same verse says, solid food is for those who are mature, who through training have the skill to recognize the difference between right and wrong. It's a, now, when we train for something, what we're doing, we're putting forth some effort. We are planning. We have a purpose. We have an intent. We're looking for a result. Is that correct? We go to y'all go to school. You go into school. You got a plan. You got a purpose. You got an intent. You're not just sitting there spending all your time, you know, in, in the early part of your life, you know, setting up, listening to somebody, you know, just to be doing it, not wasting time. Got a purpose and a plan behind it. So it's the same way with the word of God and spiritual growth. If we got the plan, we got to have a purpose. We have to have an intent that I'm going somewhere and I need to, I need to learn this in order to get there. It just don't happen because I'm saved and where the spirit of God is doing this. And no, 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 it don't happen like that. We got to go through training. So the rest of that verse says, have their skill, uh, have the skill to recognize the difference between right and wrong. Now look at Isaiah. Look at Isaiah. Uh, I think it's five and 20. I won't. Isaiah five and 20. Let's look at this right here and let's see what's going on right now. This, this is very, very important. Isaiah five and 20. Let me know when you get it. Okay, we, we up here. Now I can control that. Let me get it. Well, y'all getting Isaiah 5 and 20. I'm going to get this where I want it. I'm going to go back to that word I told you uh, that we was going to deal with. Isaiah 5 and 20. Okay, yeah, we're going to go back. Isaiah, you get it? Isaiah 5 and 20, what does it say? Woe to those who do what? Call what? Evil what? Good. And what else? Good evil i just got distracted this beautiful african queen just walked in oh lord jesus i'm yeah sure i'm calling on you help me here <laughs> that's my wife just walked in all right who call evil good and what else come on over it, it, it's over you i need you right in here who call evil what good and good is that what's happening right now family yes yeah, it's, it's a seat right up here y'all won't be on the camera if you want to uh Family, according to the political laws that have been established in the United States of America, the family has been redefined, has it not? Now, that's not God's family. You can't redefine the family that the word of God have already established. They didn't redefine. They came up with another definition of a family and called it good. Is that correct? So a lot of stuff is going, if you say it's wrong, the first thing people do is say, you judging. You're absolutely right taking the word and discerning that that's wrong you see it now so but if we don't if we are not mature we won't be able to determine or discern what's right and what's wrong and we'll just follow along with everything that's being poured out you see it now so spiritual growth has everything to do with being able to know what's right being able to know what's wrong no it, it's not to grow so i can raise people from the dead and Cast demons out and stuff like that. You can get born again right now and have the authority to do that. You, you, I mean, right now you can do that. So miracles are no sign of a believer being mature. Miracles are normal and common for any believer. Let's catch this now. Signs of maturity is being able to discern evil, to discern good, and not just fall and flow with the crowd. We don't follow the crowd. We follow the what? The cloud. All right. OK, now. So I said I was going to go back. So that's 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 a couple of verses dealing with growth. I tell you what, I got one more. Look at first John two and twelve. I'm going to show you three levels, three levels of of growth and what we should be, you know, uh, trying where we should be trying to go. You know, like like I said, if we're in a trade school, when a skill uh, technical school, uh, when a university, wherever you may be. You are there because you're trying to get to a certain point, right? You studying purposely, right? You do spending your money purposely, right? So when it comes to the the word and when it comes to growing in spiritual growth, it is it require even more. Believe it or not, it require even more. See, Yeshua have already did the work in terms of eternal salvation. Now we got work to do. That's why the scripture said, work out your own salvation. You work it out. Amen. Man, eight. All right, look at First John uh, two and twelve. Then we're gonna look at these words up here as we get into this. I'm just laying a foundation real quick here. He says, "I write to you, little children, because your sins are forgiven, for 
his name's sake. And you know, when we get born again, we on that level right there. We know we saved. I'm saved. Thank God I'm saved. Child, God forgiving me. God understand. I'm saved. I know I'm saved, right? That's a baby. All right. And then he said, write unto you who? Fathers, because you have known him who is from the beginning. Known him who is from the beginning, going back to the original. That's where you have mature believers always want to go to the original source of whatever it is to make sure this is Holy Spirit speaking. Then he said, I write unto you young men. Here's the mid-level. Because you have what? Overcome the wicked. As we mature, grow out of the baby stage, I don't need someone to pray for me all the time. I'm at the point now where I can overcome the devil. I can put him in his place and keep him under, his, under my feet where he belongs. Y'all see this? All right, then he says, I write, and then he's going to, here we go again. He's going to repeat, and he's going to hit a different area for each growth level. He said, I write unto you what? Little children, because you what? You have known the Father. You see that? Now, little children, they do what? I mean, when we are born again, this first level, know that sins are forgiven and have known the Father. Get born again, get so happy. I'm so happy I'm born, I'm saved now, and I'm, I'm connected to the kingdom. You see it? And then he said, I write unto you, little children, because you know the Father. Then I have written unto you, fathers again, because you have what? Known him who was from the beginning. He had said that twice, did he not? Because to know him who was from the beginning is to go back to the beginning. And know the foundation, the structure, the order, the keys, the uh, principles, the system. We know this, okay? And then he said, uh, I have written unto you who? Young men, because you are what? strong and the word of God abides in you and you have what overcoming the wicked uh, the wicked one so that miller growth is like a uh, young adult you know who have learned the skill they know how to maneuver in life now they can handle their stuff the mom and dad don't have to take care of them and do all this stuff they're at the point now they can take the principles of life use them for themselves apply them and get the outcome y'all see this so those are now we need to understand that we need to grow through this process we don't just jump from being a baby over to the other one okay but we'll stay a baby, never get to the point where we live in overcoming life and never get to a point where, hey, that's that's simple to me. My main thing is my fellowship relationship with the father. I mean, for us believing for stuff or uh, having things manifest, that's just normal now. You know, that's that father stage. All right. So I wanted to um, look back at this this one Hebrew word uh, for Holy Spirit. And we're going to look at the word for voice. And then we're going to go into these exercises, at least a little little bit of it. OK. All right, so you see, we have it up here. Uh, we had to spell out the word uh, for spirit. I'm going to deal with the word for spirit. Now, holy, I've, de I've dealt with that a whole lot. We, you know, using keys of revelation, uh, what follows the intent the, and purpose of the established word of God. Kadosh or Kadesh, some say. All right, then here's the word for spirit, Ruach. And it's spelled what? Resh, Vav, Hai, Het. I mean, Resh, Vav, Het. Y'all see it right there. Resh, Vav, Het. All right, now, one, one meaning for rest is what? High person, right? Now, when you see that in the hieroglyphic of the pictograph, you will see a picture of a man, head, sim symbolizing. When you see a man's head, that's symbolizing covering or authority, being an authority. Y'all catch me? Or what's high relative to mind, will, and emotion. It's, it's like a depiction of the, of the uh, soul of man. What's high in the mind? What, what's my priority in my will and relative uh, and also my emotion. And then you got Vav. I'm going to bring it together in a minute, which means to establish or connect. And then you got Het. Uh, one of the meaning is what? The inner chamber, the inner chamber of the heart or to be brought close to. Also mean to be separate. And we are separated uh, due to the fact of being owned. So when you talk about uh, spirit, you're talking about what? You're talking about the uh, intent or the what? The high person, mind, will, and emotion, that's what the Spirit is going to carry out. The Holy Spirit is going to always reflect that. Y'all catching it? And then it's connected or established to, established to what's close or the inner heart of the Father. So the Holy Spirit will always reveal the inner chamber of the inner heart of the Father, and he will always bring us close to the Father. Y'all catch it? He will always do that, bring us close to the Father, and, and, the, and the Word said that I... Come when you love me, we'll love you and we'll make our home in you. Over in Yokanon, John, I'll be 14 and 15. Talk about that. So when we look at spirit, I told you what holy means because I didn't have it on, on the PowerPoint, but I'm giving you what spirit means. 
using keys of revelation so we can get a little more instead of just thinking it's some air or something. No, the spirit of God.